I think that we reflect whether we're Canadians or not by looking at where we've lived all of our lives. For the artist, the visual artist, living in different parts of the country and being very visually aware, as we all are, you're influenced by the brightness, the stark brightness of the prairie in the winter or the prairie in the summer as compared to the light and the congestion of, say, Toronto, or the gray, luminous, luminescent light of the West Coast. You know, these kinds of things are, will influence your work. Doug Morton is, in the eyes of many art critics and curators, one of the most important Canadian artists of the past 35 years. Born and educated in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Morton later went on to study art in Paris, France, London, England, and Los Angeles, California, before returning home to Canada in 1950. Eventually, Morton would settle in Regina, Saskatchewan, where his imagination was captured by the stark prairie images. Living in Regina, with the intensity of everything, the intensity of the light, the intensity of the winter and the summer climates, uh, the simplicity of that intensity. It, it, if you can follow me, it's like a, a, a you know, 40 blow and the, and the sun shining, that kind of thing in the middle of winter. Uh, there's nothing more intense. And to um, an, a painter can't ignore that in their work. I think he's the finest underrated painter in the country. It's a fantastic, joyous, dynamic, well, no word I use is monumental. No matter what size the paintings are, they come through with great, powerful things. Images of tremendous potency. In 1960, Doug Morton and his colleagues Arthur Mackay, Ronald Bloor, Kenneth Lockheed, and Ted Godwin exploded onto the national art scene after a landmark exhibition of their work at the National Gallery of Canada. We were all experimenting. I guess I was experimenting perhaps a bit more than other group members uh, with various material uh, during this uh, 59 to 62, 63 period. Uh, just to get a feeling for what what can you use that is outside of the tradition of the painting media that will create some kind of a visual image. So the enamels with the scrapers, you putting the enamel liquid la enamel paint in ketchup dispensers and drawing with it, all of these kinds of things uh, were, were legitimate tools. And uh, I think they still are. I think any tool for the artist is, is a legitimate tool. Doug had just acquired uh, uh, these squeeze, plastic squeeze tubes, you know, that you squeeze honey out of, and it's ketchup. And uh, there, there, was, there was Martin. There was Martin. He had a big stogie stuck in his mouth, and he had a tube in each hand. He's going, oh, you know, like this, on this, just really, just really high, high energy. Which is really... Uh, it's a pivotal point in the making of art to remove the act of drawing from the physical presence of the canvas. You know, I think that some of the things that we did was sort of uh, uh, reorganize and rethink the act of drawing. You know, a Lockheed with his spray brush paintings, Morton with his squeeze bottles. I was using uh, the rollers doing the tartans. What we, were, what we were doing was removing and rethinking the act of drawing.
After seeing an exhibition of works by West Coast native artists, Morton found a new and exciting source of inspiration for his work. I'd been very influenced when I was a curator of the Arts Center in Calgary by an exhibition of West Coast art that came through. By this time I'd studied my travels, I finished my studies in Europe, my travels through Western Europe and seen all the major museums. But this is one of the most exciting exhibitions I ever saw in my life. It was the image of the totem in particular that fascinated Morton. So much so, he began to incorporate it in his paintings. Here was a series of visual images that you're reading from top to bottom, and one is related to the next, to the next, to the next. And I found this a very exciting way of composing a painting. In 1969, Morton moved to Toronto. And although he continued to incorporate some earlier imagery in his paintings, his work began to take on a more subtle and complex structure. Some saw images in his paintings that Morton himself may not have originally intended. They're quite sexy, a lot of them. They are. Take a look. <sighs> Beautiful curving buttock-like forms, breast forms. So it's totally not figurative. They're iconic, but no eyes, no features, no bodily parts, but the implication of a very fecund kind of existence, a rich one, burgeoning, bursting, fertile. I mean, you can't be more positive than what Doug does. In 1980, after 13 years in Toronto, Morton would finally settle on the west coast of Canada. He moved to Victoria, British Columbia, and it is here, outside his studio nestled amongst the trees, that Morton continues to paint and find inspiration from the world around him. The uh, term abstract artist has been used, and it's a term that is, has so many meanings when you look at the dictionary, what abstract means to abstract from is uh, one of the original definitions of the term. And as far as my work is concerned, that's exactly what I intend to do and what I've been doing more of in recent years is abstracting from the phenomena of nature. I'm trying to look at the way things have gone from decade to decade at this point in time, and I, I evolve rather slowly, I guess. But I'm, uh, I'm still excited about where I'm going. 